Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. This video is a build guide for the AOS UL7, UL8 and UL10 V5 frame kits. These frames all go together very similarly and they're designed to be easy to build, but it never hurts to have a few tips and tricks to help along the way. I've also put links down in the video description to tuning guides, 3D prints and recommended parts to help your build go as smoothly as possible. So without further ado, let's dive into the build guide. Let's start by assembling the camera cage and you should have two metal camera cage parts, two soft mount plates, two hard mount plates, along with two silicon gummies. We're gonna start by taking the two metal camera plates and setting them up back to back like this. And don't worry, they are identical and completely symmetric. So you can't really get the orientation wrong. You set them up back to back. And then if you're going to be using a soft mount camera like the DJI 03 or some of the Walks Now Avatar cameras, you're just gonna drop the two soft mount plates down onto the camera cage like this, making sure that the countersink is uppermost. If you want to use a 19 millimeter camera and you're gonna hard mount it, that's typical for most analog cameras, you're gonna drop the hard mount plates on top, make a stack like that, again, with the countersink facing upwards. I'm gonna be building for DJI 03, so I'm not gonna be using the hard mount plates. Once you have the plates installed like this, we're gonna use our M2 countersunk screws to fasten them down. If you're just using one camera plate, you're gonna be using the M2 by four millimeter countersunk screws. And if you're using a double stack with the hard mount plates, you're gonna use the M2 by six millimeter countersunk screws. To install the screws, you just need to use a standard 1.5 millimeter driver. Go very gently when you're installing the screws to make sure that you don't strip out the aluminum camera cage because it's not as hard as a steel press nut, for example, and these are only M2 screws. So just do them up till they are just nice and snug, not tight, and you can see that I'm holding the screwdriver by the shaft just to make sure that I don't apply too much torque. Once the screws are installed in the camera plates, you can then insert the silicon gummies. If you're using the O3 camera, you're gonna want the two slots in the gummy at the front of the camera cage. And if you're using the old DJI V1 style camera, you're gonna want the two slots at the back. I'm building for O3, so I'm gonna install my silicon gummies like this. And that completes the camera cage assembly. Now we're gonna build the arm sub assembly. And for this, you're gonna need the bottom motor mount plate, top motor mount plate, the two arm parts, three M3 by 10 millimeter standoffs and six M3 by six millimeter screws. Hi there everyone, Chris from the future here. After recording this video, I had a few pilots reach out to me about building X8 versions of the new UL frames. So to support that, we're gonna be shipping all of the UL frames with eight motor mount plates. So there won't be any difference between the top and the bottom motor mount in the kits that you get. Just use just use those parts interchangeably. And of course, if you do want to build an X8 version of a UL7, UL8, or UL10, you've already got all the parts you need. To start with, we're gonna install all of the standoffs onto the top motor mount plate. And we're gonna do that just using some of these screws and just assemble the standoffs onto the screw by hand. Once they're finger tight, just a quarter of a turn of a driver will snug them down really nicely. And at this stage, you might also, just for ease, want to install your motor on top of the motor mount plate. You can get to the screws after you've built the arm subassembly, but you may just find it easier to install the motor now. I'll leave that up to you. Once you've got the standoffs installed, the next thing to do is to just assemble the arms into the slots like so. Now, these arms, how tight they are, will just depend on the manufacturing tolerances. If you find they're a little bit too tight, you might just want to take a file and just do a few strokes of these two little um, cutouts here. Just file them back. That will open up the slot and make it easier to install the arm. But hopefully we've got the tolerances right and the arms are gonna go together tightly, but they're not gonna be too difficult to assemble. Once you have the arms installed in the slots like that, you can take the bottom motor mount plate and install it onto the top of the arms and then obviously we're gonna do up the six screws just to secure everything in place. Once your arm subassembly is fully assembled, you just have to go ahead and do the other three. Once you have one of your arms assembled, you're gonna to want to lay it on the bench in the layout that it's gonna be when you assemble it with the rest of the frame. Because you want to make sure that the motor mount is orientated such that the motor wires are running diagonally towards the middle of the frame, 
where your ESC and flight control stack is going to be. When you're building the other arms, just pay attention to what direction the motor mount is going to make the wires run in. And to have the cleanest build, you're going to want to make sure that you have the wires of the motors running towards the middle on all four arms. In order to change which strut the motor wires point towards, you're just going to need to flip the top motor mount plate over one way or the other, and you're going to end up with two of the arms built with the motor mount flipped in one direction and two built with the motor mount flipped in the other direction. That's going to make sure that when you assemble the frame, all the motor wires are running towards the middle. The easiest way to do it is just to lay the arms out as you're going to build the rest of the frame up so that you know which way the motor wires are going to run and before you kind of fully screw the arm together just check that the motor wires are going to be running in the direction you need them to be for the cleanest build. Otherwise you're going to assemble all the arms and then you're going to need to disassemble some of them in order to flip the motor plate over and that's a pain. Once you've built the arms it's time to move on to assembling the main body of the frame and we're going to start by taking the bottom plate for the frame and we're going to work out which is the top side of the bottom plate. So look for the four press nuts that are installed for the flight control stack. They will stick out on the top side of the bottom plate. Once you've identified the top side, we're going to install all the standoffs onto the bottom plate with M3 by 8 mm screws and I'm going to show you how to do that now. Once you have all eight standoffs installed in the positions as shown, just check that the standoffs are sticking up in the same direction as the press nuts because this is going to be the inside of the frame. At this point, you can then test fit your arms into the frame here and just double check that everything is pointing in the right direction for when you do the electronics assembly. At this stage, I would suggest that you just test fit the top plate onto the frame and check that it all assembles together before you then build out the whole electronics because you need to make sure that these slots that everything is going to press into for the arms are not too tight and they're not going to cause a problem when you're assembling the frame. So you just want to gently press the arms into the slots on the bottom and then take the top plate and just check that all of the slots line up nicely and lock into place on the top plate just like this. If you find that any of the arm slots are too tight, then again, it's really easy. It's just a few strokes of a file on the, uh, on the slot just to widen it out and that will make sure that the arm just slots in really, really nicely. Once you're happy that the whole frame goes together, like this one has, you can take the top plate off and build out all your electronics, install your motors, get everything ready because once all the electronics is installed, the final step is just going to be to button up the top of this frame and then finally install the camera cage that we made at the start. If you're building the AOS UL10 rather than the UL7 or UL8, you're going to have 16 standoffs to install onto the bottom plate to either side of each of the arm slots. The extra standoff is just there to provide additional strength and rigidity for the longer arms and heavier motors that obviously uh, are going to have larger props with more thrust. Otherwise, the build is exactly the same. Once all your electronics is installed, we need to button up the frame. And for that, we're going to be using some M3 by 8 mm screws. They're just going to go down into the standoffs. And what you want to do here is just work your way around the frame, just making sure that the arms are locking into their slots correctly. And once the arm has locked into its slot, you can then just gently do up the neighboring screw to make sure that it doesn't pop out and work around to the next arm. Don't try and necessarily get all of the arms to lock in in one go because that's pretty tricky but if you go one by one and then just gently do up a screw to stop it coming out again that's how I do it and I find that works really well just to make sure that all of the arms lock in properly and you don't have any problems. So just working your way around doing one arm at a time. There we go that one's in. And again, remember, if, if any of them are too tight, you can always just do a little bit of filing, but shouldn't be necessary at this stage. And once you've got all the screws done up loosely, just go around, double check everything is locked together, and then you can do them all up fully tight. You're also going to want to just double check that all of the arms are still nicely locked into place on the bottom plate. 
they are in this case, but sometimes as you're assembling the frame, one of these can pop out and you just wanna make sure as you assemble, go slowly and check that they're all nicely locked in. Obviously you don't wanna be trying to assemble it when the, uh, the arm isn't in its slot. Once everything looks good, you just do up the screws moderately tight. Again, you shouldn't need to do a lot to tighten these screws. They should just tighten up nice and snug and that will be plenty. There we go. And with all of the arm screws assembled, the final stage is to assemble the front camera cage. If you're building the AOS UL10, you're going to have 16 M3 by 8 millimeter screws to install, two per arm strut. But otherwise, the assembly process is exactly the same. To assemble the front camera cage, we've obviously got the two camera cage parts that we assembled previously and eight M2 by six millimeter button head screws. And to assemble the camera cage, we're just going to take the two halves and making sure that the silicon gummy and carbon fiber camera plate that we made earlier is facing inwards towards the middle of the frame, we're just going to assemble the camera cage onto the top plate and then the bottom plate. Don't worry if the silicon gummies fall out at this stage because you can always put them back in after the cage is fully assembled. Once you've assembled the camera cage onto the top plate, we're just going to flip it over and assemble it onto the bottom plate. You may need to just flex the bottom plate ever so slightly in order to get those camera cage screws to kind of line up and go in. That's completely normal. That is all to do with the compression fit that's holding the front arms together. And so the camera cage actually provides a little bit of that compression just to grip the front arm nice and tightly. Once you've installed those eight M2 button head screws, the whole frame is assembled and all that remains is to reinstall the silicon gummies if they fell out as they did for me. And then you can install your camera into the front camera cage and the build should be complete because all the other electronics should already be nicely assembled in the frame. And there you go, that's how to build an AOS UL7. If you're building a UL8, it's gonna be absolutely identical. Make sure to check out the links in the video description for tuning guides, recommended parts, 3D prints, and much, much more. Until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.